And I indicated to you that I have a very, very important intervention and, what, and, a, and, a, and a surprise for you as well, because we needed to get to elevate this conversation in getting other minds as well on it. I've been joined on Zoom by Justice William Atoguba, retired, the former Supreme Court Justice of the Republic of Ghana. Justice William Atoguba, good morning to you, sir, and thank you so much for joining us here on Key Point. Morning. <clears throat> and it's always good to have you. And I know that you have seen this recent ruling in this 109-page document as released by the justices of the Supreme Court within the week on Thursday. One of the issues that has become a matter of concern is the matter of jurisdiction. The five justices who ruled in favor of the plaintiff Alex Alafanyo Maki is saying that even if the case was filed at the High Court and the interpretation of Article 97 G and H became a bone of contention, the High Court by Article 130 was required to stay proceedings and refer the issue to the Supreme Court. But in the contention of Justice Amado Tanko, this procedure was is not that which was employed in this case. And as a result of sidestepping this procedure of this high court's jurisdiction being invoked on this case, but rather going directly to the Supreme Court, it negates the Supreme Court's jurisdiction on this particular case. I want to find out your thoughts on this matter of jurisdiction, whether it has been settled, really, by the recent ruling. Um, thank you. Um, this question of jurisdiction uh, ought to have been regarded as settled long ago if uh, the court uh, was minded to follow precedent. Well, the court is bound by its previous decisions. It can depart from them for good reason. But there came a time this provision about stare decisis has virtually been negated. you find in the latter days, you can take it from, uh, let's say, 2012, thereabouts going. Uh, you find uh, there's complete and frequent violation of that rule of stare decisis. The question about the jurisdiction in this matter, I mean, it could not have been a serious problem if this stare decisis were observed. First of all, <clears throat> even let's ask a very common sense question. When uh, parliamentary results are declared and people are contending that they rather should have been elected, the results were not fair, where do they go? Is that to the High Court? And who has ever said that that's the wrong forum? Common sense. Mm. And this common sense is supported by the provisions of the Constitution. Otherwise, how could it have been, <laughs> have been happening? Unchallenged. But suddenly, uh, you know, beginning from, I think, uh, the Beer Bell case. Uh, uh, second day, uh, Amadou and uh, Bia, Bia Bell versus uh, second day. No, he rather even went a second day. 
Mm. Here was a case that concerned the validity of the election of the MP for Boku Central, I think. The challenge to his election went to the High Court, and it was thrown out while well, it was out of time. They went to the Court of Appeal in the field there, and then a new action was brought to the Supreme Court. This same situation arose, uh, I think, in 1997 or so, um, in the case of Yeboa versus J. H. Mensa. I was on that panel. Let, let's uh, briefly uh, state the facts. J. Mm. H. Mensa, <laughs> uh, I think he was from Sunyani or so. Uh, he didn't contest that particular election from where he hailed from. Uh, that's Siani. He went to another place and <clears throat> he did not reside there for a, con I mean, a, a, a continuous period or a, an aggregate of five years huh? as required by the Constitution. And actually, if the plaintiffs had taken that matter up, in the High Court within the 21 days. He would have been thrown out of Parliament. Well, he, he clearly <laughs> would have mm -hmm. satisfied. But they waited until the, that period had expired. And now, and that's where I want, I want always to be forthright. This man turned out to be a problem to the government of the day in parliament as a minority leader. And I think some felt that there uh, should be a way to get him out. They then found that the High Court gate was closed, so they sought to circumvent that by coming to the Supreme Court. I was on the panel. Hmm. And the issue. Now, interestingly enough, it was this uh, same president who was counsel for J.H. Mensa. And he contended that uh, the Supreme Court had no jurisdiction. It was a parliamentary matter. Hmm. Now, hmm. we're confronted with the previous decision of Wedema versus Awana Williams. That was decided in 1969 by uh, judges uh, one dares not to disagree with. But that is beside the point. When uh, this matter came before me, I, I, I must confess, I, I was suspicious. Why is it that after all this time they are coming with this matter? Uh, mm. Is it because the man is uh, a pain in somebody's flesh? So I said to myself, if I look at this matter and I find that, you know, there's no jurisdiction, I'll throw the case out. That was my approach. Mm. So I read that Wedema versus Awana Williams. Yes. And Azu Krab, uh, who read the judgment, who wrote it? said that on the issue of parliamentary election, the Supreme Court and the High Court had concurrent jurisdiction. So I had to consider this one over and over and over as a pure legal question, not question of politics as we are doing today. And I found that notwithstanding their uh, distinguished uh, uh, judicial status. Mm. I couldn't agree with them that when the Constitution says in Article 130 that subject to the high court jurisdiction of fundamental human rights, the Supreme Court 
shall have exclusive jurisdiction with regard to interpretation and enforcement. It can at the same time, how can something be exclusive and be concurrent at the same time? <laughs> <laughs> so when I, 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 I got to that uh, 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 idea, I said, no, I, I will not uh, accept their reason. Mm. And that formed me to rule uh, uh, in favor of J.H. Uh, Mensah. Where five on the panel, only one dissented. We took time, we wrote lengthy judgment and analyzed. When BABL case came, the lead judgment didn't, as far as I can recall, didn't deal with that, didn't try to, to see whether we were right in departing from our uh, Williams and Gwedema. Nothing. Just said that, oh, uh, each time that the person continued to sit in the Supreme Court, I mean, in, in the Parliament was a, a new course of action. Now, I mean, I, I don't see this, in it because there's one provision governing the status in, uh, of the elected person. And right. in my opinion, that makes it an action in REM. It relates to the status of the elected person. Mm. And action in so that you accrual of course of action keeps on. And even if it is, the express limitation period is there. Mm. So, I mean, we, we, we departed from our rulings and clearly established that in, the, in matters of parliamentary tenure, I mean, uh, election, validity of elections, and so forth, the High Court is a proper forum. The High Court is the proper forum? For yes. For the determination of the validity of a parliamentary election. And, of course, by extension. <laughs> I mean, that's just one item of that jurisdiction. Mm. If there are others, also like vacation, uh, I mean, it simply follows common sense, common logic, that the same thing will apply. It's so, in that sense, the Supreme Court shouldn't have even entertained this particular case uh, at all? At all. Now, let me emphasize. A jurisdiction to interpret and to enforce under Article 130 is described as an original jurisdiction. I'm saying that in a situation like this, they don't have original jurisdiction. What they have is a jurisdiction of reference. The, the subject matter belongs to the High Court. And the same Article 132 makes it clear that in a situation like that, they have only reference jurisdiction. So I don't see, I mean, I don't know. That's why I'm emphasizing. And I think that at the heart of all this pretentious discussion going on, huh. there's no true legality involved. It's just politics, that honorable type. All we are doing is the paramountcy of political partisanship, party partisanship. That is what is controlling this country. If that is not addressed, we are just wasting our time. True law no longer will apply. Where the basis of anything in this country is political, politically driven. That is the menace. I agree with Martin Fable's observations along these lines. That is a fundamental matter. Unless it's arrested. This menace, this vice will continue to fester and constitutionalism will be subverted, paid lip service to people suffer. In other words, we are not entitled to benefit from the constitutional order put in place for this country. That is the true situation. That is the true evil to be addressed. 
So, uh, uh, so sir, and, 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 but when you, you make reference to the fact that clearly the Supreme Court shouldn't have entertained this this case at all, in yes. in the recent ruling of, of the five who ruled in favor of the plaintiff, they argue yeah. that although the High Court had jurisdiction with regard to whether a seat is vacant or not in Parliament, what was yeah. before them was purely a question of law regarding the true interpretation of 97-1 GNH and not factual disputes regarding seat vacan vacation in Parliament. Sorry to say that's superficial reasoning. <laughs> that's superficial reasoning. Yes. It is not, I mean, but that issue has been addressed by Article 132. Now, where it arises in a matter belonging to a, another court, the Supreme Court only comes in when an interpretation or enforcement issue arises and is referred to the Supreme Court. That is the only time they can come in. So you don't you know, take <laughs> 132 about the, is, is it not dealing specifically with that question of law that they are talking of and how it should be, uh, uh, you know, brought to the Supreme Court? Indeed, 132 or, says where an issue that relates to a matter or question referred to in clause one of this article arises in any proceedings in the court other than the Supreme Court, the court shall stay the proceedings and refer the question of law involved to the Supreme Court for determination. And the court in yes. which the question arose shall dispose of the case in accordance with the decision of the Supreme Court. Yes. That is the constitutional uh, order. And let me say this. Those days that law was, you know, there was fidelity to the law. And even today, it's reflected in their judgment, the majority judgment. Jurisdiction is a fundamental matter. So the conditions upon which your jurisdiction arises, if they are not there, you don't have the jurisdiction. And that is it. That this matter is directed to the High Court. However, patent the uh, constitutional issue that may arise there, you don't have original jurisdiction. You have jurisdiction of reference. That is it. Is that what they, 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 they uh, uh, exercised? That's not what they exercised. They purported to exercise original jurisdiction. Whereas in this kind of situation, it is only reference jurisdiction. It's quite clear from the same uh, uh, provisions of wanted. Hmm. So, so as the Supreme Court has always held consistently, a point of jurisdiction when, when taken and, and successfully upheld should foreclose any consideration of the merits of any case? Completely. You don't have a jurisdiction how do you touch the merits. And even in the majority, there is clearly and plenarily stated, and I agree with that, even just saying as is solidly laid down that as for jurisdiction is so fundamental that even if the parties don't raise it, the court is served so motto ex debito justicia. So it sounds like there, there will be no foundation upon which the merits can stand. At all, how can you put something of my four and UAC, Mosi and Bajina? My four and UAC, I think it's something. But as for Mosi and Bajina, I think it's uh, 1963, Volume 1, Ghana Law Report, page 634 or so. <laughs> Supreme Court. Mm. Akupato HSP <laughs> wrote that unanimous judgment. So, I mean, you don't say that well, the same issue would have come. The thing is, when do you have jurisdiction over the issue in a matter that is consigned to a lower court. That is it. No, you don't substitute the Zedarata for, you know, actuality of jurisdiction. Supreme Court.
Well, just as I want to make the point and, 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 and say that to the extent that this matter of jurisdiction is a problem, Justice Amadou says that he finds the decision of the majority as an aberration to the established and accepted judicial position of the Supreme Court, which, with, with profound respect, he says he hopes in no distant future the resultant usurpation of the constitutional prerogative of the High Court incidental to the majority decision will be reversed. You agree with that? Well, yes, but the thing is, as, as I've told you, in the course of time, the Supreme Court was not faithful to the constitutional prescription of stare decisis. So you find Bill Bill uh, and uh, secondly going off tangent, entertaining a matter that should have been commenced in the High Court, and then some uh, uh, followed. It's very interesting if you read that Bill Bill case <coughs> and look the. <laughs> Deutsche and another <laughs> justice. <laughs> That's interesting, eh? They violent, they disagreed with the majority decision on the grounds that I'm, I'm commencing. The same grounds. That's very interesting. <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. uh, I, I think when we, in uh, human life, it's important to apply realism. Uh, and, and that things. That, 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 that happened. The majority decision didn't even discuss, if I remember well, I'm yet to uh, go back to my books six years since I've retired, but I think mm -hmm. I'm recollecting. <laughs> In, indeed. Uh, they did not examine Awana Williams and Gredeman, they did not examine Yeboah and Mensa and so forth and try to demonstrate why those decisions should not bind them. That is, from a certain time, the Supreme Court after that you started sliding down judiciary. I'm telling you, you find that this study decision was not observed. You mm. find a panel uh, taking a decision one way then another case comes. Either the same panel or a, 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 a good number of those who decided the would take a contrary stand and then back and I mean, this wasn't happening before. That's why I'm saying something fundamentally has gone wrong. That is what has to be redressed. If we are to get back on track and run this country properly and not politically and myopically, Now, um, so, and you, you think that the po po politics is, is a cause of this, that the judiciary co continuously been drawn into, into politics? Because that was a concern by many that th this case may have just a, a, a ex exposed, overly exposed the judiciary to, to the politics of it, sir. Yes, you say? Sorry, I, I lost you briefly then. You are talking about the oh. problem that we have, we, yes, the problem that we are faced with now. And yes. the, 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 the concern that was raised when this matter started was that this was going to open up the judiciary for the politics of this particular issue. And do you see that as a problem here? It's a problem. That's, that's a realistic problem. Now I'll demonstrate it. Look even at the, the, the empanelment. <laughs> Ebu has referred to all those. I mean, for what reason will you bring the younger justices to handle such a weighty matter to the exclusion of the seniors? What reason? I mean, this reason, sir. Then they brought in these two others. But, I mean, what were they going to do? In fact, even <laughs> legally, I don't, I don't see whatever was left for them to decide on this. Because 
in rejecting the application to set aside their uh, uh, injunction, uh, one or their directive. They had ruled that they had jurisdiction. They had already decided that they had jurisdiction. The speaker had no jurisdiction over the matter. It was so. What what <laughs> was left actually for determination? <laughs> oh. And so, and these same five who ruled that mm -hmm. there was jurisdiction, they were still there, and only two came. And the five went the way they, they went, predictably. <laughs> so it, it was pre predictable? Oh, sure. Hmm. Are you not in this? Don't you follow the horizon hmm. of judicial functioning in the Supreme Court? Hmm. Are you surprised? Tell me, honestly, were you surprised? Uh, the, the way that the, the, the five justices went on this on the particular case w w was, was predictable. Now, uh, let me tell you, why wasn't it being referred? Let us even go by pretentious legal theory. They're not the same person who had ruled on the object uh, the application to set aside uh, their processes that they had jurisdiction. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, if the same people are to <laughs> pronounce again on the same matter, what do you expect? Okay. Don't you see yes, indeed. It was the five who sat on the, the speaker's application. Yeah. Yes. So yes. It, they, are, they, are, they are dissenting to were, were only added on the substantive case. Yes. Now, what could two do against five? Uh, five? Look. Um, as I've said some time ago, this question of political poison in the judicial system didn't start today, but it has gotten to, I mean, its peak under this current administration. It has gotten to its peak. And that is the, the, the real virus, constitutional virus, to be redressed. you find the lawyers coming to the studios, they are not coming there really to talk about lawyers, except a few of them. Some like Martin Kwebu, I don't think he's politically minded from his uh, presentations. But some just come, their duty is to uphold their party's line. They're not interested in the correct law, but their party position must prevail. That's what's happening. And so, it, that, that's the fundamental thing to, to, to add. Otherwise, this kind of thing will continue under the guise of legality and constitutionalism. Under the guise. What, what's the danger that we are faced with, uh, with with this situation as you have so passionately spoken about? If what you have just espoused continues. You said, what is the, the, the way forward? Yes. The, in fact, the danger we are confronted with, yes. with the, 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 con the politicization of the yes. judicial process, as you put it there. What is the danger that we are faced with if this continues? That's what I was asking. Oh, I mean, uh, it will be, will be uh, continuing in... The rule of people, rule of politics, not of law. Clearly, that is not rule of politics. Political part, partisanship. That's what is obtaining. And it's, if it's not arrested, no matter which party comes, will continue suffering. That's why I'm so concerned. Mm. And continuously... And the, uh, pardon? Yes, you, you we're making a point, sorry. Uh, you, you went silent a bit, yes. But you can go ahead. Oh, you, are the, you have jurisdiction uh, over the matter to ask 
<laughs> the question. <laughs> Indeed, no, I, 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 I have, I have original jurisdiction no, on the on this not, program. Not, reference jurisdiction. not, not, a, not a reference jurisdiction. <laughs> Indeed, so for the. Uh, uh, yeah, yes, <laughs> exclusive. Exclusive jurisdiction, indeed. Not concur concurrent. <laughs> Not at all. Not at all. I'm scandalized to see in the reference of some of the majority judgments that on an issue where the Supreme Court uh, it's unfortunate. We 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 having a this is. And the high court yes. have concurrent jurisdiction on the matter, the, uh, uh, the concurrent jurisdiction of kind of concurrence. There's no concurrence there. It says it's exclusive. And I cannot reason by any process to arrive at the fact that when they say something is exclusive, it can also be capable of concurrence with another case. But My mind cannot have. And, and, and the other justification by the uh, majority justice, Justice Asiodu wrote that it must be placed on record here and now that there is no provision in the Constitution that when a person perceives that a provision of the Constitution requires the interpretation or the enforcement of this court or that when it is perceived that a legislation has been made in excess of the powers conferred on Parliament, that person shall first have to institute a suit in the High Court before the High Court could refer the matter to the Supreme Court. Such, such a stand will be very, in his view, circuitous indeed. Uh, any such condition imposed on Ghanaians is, in his view, with the greatest respect, not sanctioned by the Constitution. Oh, I with all due respect to him. Uh, you know, the, Lex, the legal legs is standing on for this kind of Denunciation. Is anybody seriously saying that where a, a matter, a cause or matter, is within the original jurisdiction of another court, and only referential jurisdiction is reserved to the Supreme Court, the Supreme Court can still purport to have original jurisdiction? And where is concurrence? I mean, the scenario he has even painted doesn't arise. Because you are bound to go there and then referentially come to a Supreme Court. And let me say this politics apart. Long ago, it's not today. Mekankai and the Republic, Asiyama and so Look, long ago, yes. And um, from Awana Williams and Wedema, if a matter is not ambiguous, any court can apply the Constitution. In that case, interpretation doesn't arise. These days, and um, from the way things are going, you can give a dog a bad name and hang it. Something can be crystal clear. Oh, it's not clear. The, I mean, these are the things. Now let me tell you, this situation has to be arrested seriously for constitutional governance and not political, I mean, partisanship and functioning. That's not governance. It takes place. One, the mode of appointment of judges suffers from the virus of hepatitis infection. <laughs> That's even gone to cirrhosis. <laughs> the judge has become doctor. Describe it. Sir? Why do you want to establish an independent judiciary and the president is the appointing of, and even if you look at the appointment, uh, <laughs> He is basically has the, the power to nominate and uh, appoint the chief justice, who is the head. Hmm. Sir, so I, 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 uh, fortunately, we, we, we want we, an institution we, to, to be independent, yes. and the head must be yours. No, hmm. that's I, I, nonsense. That's to use the old party. 
expression, malice are for thought. The pain of the constitutional right. deterioration in this country. I said there has been massive constitutional deterioration. Sir, I do appreciate your time and uh, pouring out your heart on this matter. Yes. Is it possible that Justice, William, <laughs> Justice William Atuguba retired?